Hi everyone, I'm Connie from Connie's Magic Moments. You're watching this video tutorial today on um, how to bring in sky overlays, primarily for you to bring in Connie's Magic Moments sky overlays, but of course you can use the two methods that I'm going to show you to bring in any sky overlay, whether you take your own like I always have or use someone else's. Um, I do have two processes that I use depending on the image and depending on the type of image and the backdrop it is. The first method I'm going to show you, which is the quick selection tool method, is I find the simplest for beach sessions and beach backdrops because the horizon is so clear cut um, and simple to work with. And normally you only have subjects coming um, above the horizon or possibly maybe, you know, a bridge or something like that. But it's generally pretty easy to use a quick selection tool for beach um, backdrops. So that's the first method I'm going to show you today. The other method we are, I'm going to show you is um, where we use the gradient tool and it's more for a setting like this one where you can see there's trees or mountains in the backdrop um, and how to bring it with that one. But first we'll start with this one. Um, as you can see I've brought it in just straight out of RAW. I haven't done anything to it at this point. Normally my if I am going to use a sky overlay to enhance my image it is always the first step that I do. Um, so that um, that's done before I start doing any clean edits on the subject and also to uncolor my hands. So, okay, from here we will go um, up to the tools palette and we would choose a quick selection tool. Um, I always have my quick selection tool on the smallest um, brush, which like you would use for your normal brush settings, you can use the brackets on your keyboard as a shortcut to bring it bigger. As you can see, I'm making it bigger or you can make it smaller. I always have it, as I said, on a smaller setting. This is so that it gives the most accurate result. Um, again, you can, it's a personal preference whether you drag from the right or you drag from the left. I generally tend to drag from the left. I don't know why, it's just what I do. Um, so then you pretty much just put your quick selection tool down and just drag it along. Don't do it too fast. You want it to make sure it gathers all that information for you. And there you go. Easy as that. It has now selected pretty much exactly what I need it to do. As you can see, we have got some of the hair that hasn't been selected. So we need to go back and select that. You, we won't get all this, um, all the hair, the really wispy bits in the image, but that's okay. As you'll see at the end, you won't even notice that once we've actually put the sky overlay in. So from here to um, select the hair or any area in the image that you want to go back and select, just hold your Alt key down on the keyboard and then hold that down and then just run your selection, a selective tool back over the areas that you want to be selected into that image. Now see these little white bits here, just, un just take your finger off the Alt key to go back, just to select, to go in a little bit. That is pretty much all I would do for that image. I've selected exactly what I want the sky to be dropped into. From here we will go to select and modify and feather. So we just want to feather that line a little bit so it's a little bit soft. I always normally use between two and five, generally three, um, and just push OK. And then you can either right click here and do layer by copy, or you can go layer, new layer by copy. Both the same process, one's just quicker than the other. Um, so then as you can see, it's made a layer of that sky that we want to bring um, a new sky into. So from here, um, I always have when I'm doing sky overlays, both my Photoshop and my bridge open, as you can see, so that um, I can just drop, just drag and drop my skies in. It's way easier and quicker. So go along the skies and pick an image that will suit the tones and the color and will enhance the image. I'm going to go with this one here. So I pretty much just drag it over, drop it in resize to fit, just bring it over the horizon just a little bit, enter, and then we want to go up to the layer where the sky is and just right click and create a clipping mask. As you can see now it has cropped out, exactly. it's put the sky in exactly where we want it to be, but if you zoom in you can tell that it's, a, it's, not, a, it's not the real sky, the lines aren't soft, the hair is standing out a bit. So to rectify that it's pretty easy. All of the steps that I do, depending again on the image, it's personal preference, bring the opacity down a little bit. For this image, I'm just going to bring it down to 90. Create a layer mask. 
to use your get your brush to so that you can brush back that mask a bit have it on black and have it really small have it I mean have the opacity small at about 20 to 25 have your brush quite big and just run it over the horizon a couple of times and as you can see now you can barely tell you can't tell that that is not the real sky and guys that is pretty much all I would do for a beach setting to bring in a sky overlay from here I would just flatten and then start my clean edit on the subject and then do my color enhancing which will be in another tutorial down the track when I get my actions um, ready for you guys but generally um, for any beach setting that I want to bring a sky into an enhancing image that's the steps I take that's what I do sometimes you do need to make the sky look a bit a little bit more softer and blurred so that um, it doesn't look like again like it's a fake sky and again you would just use your Gaussian blur steps um, to soften that like you would for any blur okay now going on to the next image to show you how we can a totally different step on how and sorry a totally different method um, to you to bring in a sky overlay and you can use either of these methods on either of these images I just find <clears throat> this is the way that I do it so the reason why I'm choosing this method for this image is because it's not as such it's not as clear cut a selection it doesn't have a clear line um, for the selection tool to choose if I was to use a selection tool on this one which I can show you it just it will sort of go in a little bit it's a little bit harder and the line won't look as soft when we actually go to do it whereas if we go back and start from here I'm going to show you how to do this other method which is using the gradient tool okay so firstly we're going to do a little bit backwards for this image we're going to actually bring the sky in first um, so we need to pick a sky that's going to have those same warm tones as the image and we also want to remember when we're choosing a sky overlay to put in for an image that we remember where the light and the sun is coming from in this image as you can see due to the glow on mum's hair and sun boy's face and along the grass the light is definitely and the sun is definitely coming from the right hand side so I want to pick a sky where the sun is coming from that direction so I'm going to go whoops yeah, oh, oops, down here, new skies. <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry, go back a step. Okay, here it is, number 10. So again, we're just dragging and dropping. Bring it in. Now, I want to, because I want to show that it's obviously that sun that's coming from the right, I don't want to have it down here where it's just the blue part. I want to have it where it's a bit of a mix. So I'm going to bring it in there, just enter, create a layer mask. And then you want to invert it, which on I think both PC and Mac is just Command I or Control I to invert it. So now um, you can't physically see the sky. From here, we want to go back down to your background layer, go to Select Color Range, and what we're actually doing here is we're choosing a color from the background that we want the sky to come into. And as you can tell, for this image, it's pretty clear cut that we just want to click on the white. Make sure localized color clusters is chosen. I always tend to have that range at 100%. And the fuzziness, see if I bring that right down, you can barely see um, the forefront of the forefront of the image and the line of the mountains and the trees is quite sharp. We actually want that to be a bit fuzzy or we want that sky to bleed in a little bit to the background. So I'm bringing it up probably to about 140 where you can see the gray is coming over. And then just okay. <clears throat> so now you can see how it's chosen it has actually chosen that area for us um, now you are sometimes if, if someone's wearing a white shirt or there's light coming through that direction you can see how um, it's selected a little bit here on the boy but we can lay a mask that back off in a moment from here we want to click back onto the layer mask on the sky overlay layer we want to go to our gradient tool now we need to make sure that we have chosen um, white as the foreground black as the background go up to gradients and we want to use it where it's white and then translucent and then we want to choose the very first gradient here and all we're doing is just drawing in some lines like that to bring in the sky until you're happy with 
where it comes in. As you can see there, that's kind of blended on all, all it's blended in nicely. Um, from here, we just want to make sure we're on that to mask off where it is on the boy and mum's face and this grass. Go to brush, make sure it's on black, your opacity's right up. Bring your brush down. Oh, sorry, you need to de deselect first. And then just brush off where it has seeped into the subjects. And again, guys, that's pretty much it. So from there, I would flatten and then start my clean edits on the sub on the subjects and then do my color enhancing. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that, that video, this video tutorial helped to teach you how to drop in sky overlays to your images. There's two different methods, um, two different ways of doing it. You can use either method um, on either type of image. It's really a personal preference, but at least this way you've learned two different ways to bring in your overlays. Um, I hope this helped. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email. And um, good luck with the overlays. And um, I hope to talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye.